Hello Fucandi here and welcome back to Solitude and we have completed our tropical island resort. We'll be coming back to the island at the end of today's episode to give it a name and also name our resort. So thank you all so much for those who suggested names for that. We will be doing that a little bit later on. But when I loaded into Solitude, I was intending on getting back to the downtown and building out some more of the areas around there, in particular the little bay to the left-hand side of the downtown. However, we have huge industrial need and not really very much residential or otherwise at the moment. So the plan's changed a little bit and we're actually going to head back on over to our original area around the town of Serenity up into the hillsides to create ourselves our first forestry industry. Now I feel like forestry would be a major source of income for Solitude as a whole city and of course we do have a load of logs placed in down at our port so it's about time we actually added in some source for that so yeah we're just going to be placing it up on the hillside over here by Serenity, overlooking Serenity in fact and we're going to start off with this intersection which honestly caused me no end of trouble. As always with solitude and road networks, the terrain is not friendly. It's really slopey and where I'm trying to cross over it, going from terrain that's higher down to lower and, and try and make sensible looking slip roads that your car isn't just going to fly down and crash into other traffic on the road is, um, yeah, quite time consuming, I won't lie. So we do a lot of fiddling around on this intersection to get it looking sensible and at least somewhat realistic, I think. I'm actually focusing only on the connection going down in towards Serenity and into the rest of Solitude as opposed to over the mountains onto the other side of the island. Because at the moment we don't have anything over there for the trucks to need to transport to. So we will come in later on and add a junction in this same area which is going to head on over the mountains to the other side of the island when we eventually build there. But for now this will be absolutely fine for our traffic. So of course for the body of the area we're going to be using our old familiar mud roads. You can think mud, you can think dirt, you can think sawdust everywhere. That's kind of my vision for this. And I really wanted it to be multi-layered so we're going to spread it out across this whole area on the mountainside here. And at this bit you can just see me actually adjusting the forestry resource because a large proportion of this area actually didn't have forestry resource in it. So with tree anarchy on, yes, I'm still on the old EML mods on Solitude as I wasn't able to transfer over without losing a load of prop work. But even in tree controller, there is a lock forestry resource option. If we untick that and then spam in a load of trees, that will give us really dark green forestry resource. And then what we want to do is click on it again so it locks that resource in place on the ground and then we can remove all of our trees and start designing out our area making sure that we have got that natural resource still here even without actually having the actual trees in so that's the method that i use here now for the main building i'm actually just going to be using the vanilla forestry industry area assets for this from the industries dlc pack if you want to pick up any of those packs please do check out instant gaming for great discounts which also helps support the channel there is a link in the description below so we're just going to be using those default packs and trying to help them to blend into the solitude vibe by using our workshop low poly trees for this just nice and simple will look very very blended by the end of the build into the rest of solitude and into the mountains i did debate having palms in here but i kind of thought it probably wasn't appropriate for an actual forestry area maybe if they were farming dates or something like that so maybe we'll do that in another place I can imagine we're going to have quite a few forestry and plantation style areas across Solitude. So this really is just, well, I, I say the first, it's, it's not. It's the second behind the farm that we actually did in episode two. When I was designing this area, like I said previously, I really wanted it to be multi-layered. We're working with crazy terrain here. So you can see the road network that I've laid out here has essentially three layers to it. We've got the forest plantations all the way up the top spreading right up the mountain because they really nicely don't actually force the terrain in any particular direction super super handy we've got more on the lower level and then in the middle we're going to have most of our production buildings so you can see me here just extending out actually the vanilla log yard so we used network multi-tool to unlock just one side of the fence and we were then able to delete that out with the bulldozer or with move it whichever method you prefer there and then we can just use our vanilla forestry fence to extend out the area a whole load of log props that you can see me putting in here as well 
And then we just tidy or mess it up, I suppose, with lots of sawdusty, dusty, dirty, muddy decals all around the whole area. And I really, really like how this comes out. It makes it feel like one huge log yard that is fitted into the environment around it as opposed to being, you know, harsh square boundaries to it and slotted into the area like that. So I feel like it looks really natural in the end and super, super pleased with how it comes out. Absolutely love these log pile assets off the workshop, of course. We use them down in the port for our big log storage there, but they work super, super well in this location. And then the final little addition to our main log yard is actually adding in one of the forestry building sub buildings to this. So just the little shed, which has some nice props around it. Just to add another shed essentially into the log yard, just because it is absolutely so huge. But to make this functional, because of course, sub buildings, when you search for them and find it are non-functional, they're essentially just props really. To make it functional, we're using block services for the forestry industry, and I'm gonna use one of the large log yard block services just to drop it inside this building here. And what that does is it means that this operates as if it was a large log yard. So we're gonna have the trucks coming in and out delivering logs, we just won't visually see them because it's all hidden inside this block service asset, but it functions in that manner. So actually people will be coming in and out of this area and actually using it, which will be really great to see versus just having a kind of static prop area. So now we're coming on to fill out the rest of our production buildings, most of which will sit on this main plateau. And some of them are particularly large, like the pulp mills. We'll come on to that in a second. The biomass pellet plant, however, which we're placing in here. Love, love, love this asset. One of my all time favorite assets in the whole game. And there is a cougar <laughs> prowling around our forestry area. But if we go back to it, yes, love this biomass pellet plant. I think it sits up on this hillside really, really nicely, particularly next to the log yard as well. It kind of creates this open courtyard area. And then I did, again, use Network Multi-Tool to remove the side fence just so it wasn't clipping into the road and we could still place it here how we wanted it to. With all the decals on, it looks absolutely glorious. <laughs> I did also actually want to put in some sand storage as well, so I decided to do that slightly further down, hoping that when the sawdust is actually piled up in these assets that you'll be able to see it from the highway, which I think will make for quite a nice feature on the side of the hillside because they can get pretty tall in there. Again, we use Bob to remove car parking spaces, which is just inappropriate and change everything to gravel and dirt so that it gives us our muddy solitude forestry vibe. Then when it comes to the little sawmills, slotting them in in a few different locations I think was quite nice. So again, I quite like this one at the bottom of the hill, which you will see in the detailing later on, we come and engulf with forestry and it ends up looking pretty cool. But coming back to paper production, the pulp mill is just way, way, way too huge. So the route I decided to take was actually just to use some generic industry buildings, two of which are just completely vanilla assets and again utilize our block services to add in the pulp mill functionality to them. So we'll still be producing paper from this and high volumes of paper as per the pulp mill, but we don't have to have that huge massive chimney stack, very industrial, heavy looking building. Perfect for other locations, but not for our solitude forestry hillside. I want it to feel more run down and rural than giant machinery, if that makes any sense. And then we come on to maintenance and barracks. Now the maintenance building for forestry is absolutely ginormous and will not sit well on our very, very slopey hillside. So again, I decided to use block services for this and utilize that by placing one inside a generic industry building. So again, we'll, we'll have the functionality, we'll have the benefits of having a maintenance yard in our forestry area without having to place the ginormous ugly asset and we can just use one of our nice little workshop industry assets for this which i think kind of has a maintenance vibe about it too and then the forestry barracks is a notoriously ugly asset honestly it's actually quite nice for use in something like a summer camp that's the sort of vibe it gives me but it definitely doesn't look like a workers barracks and especially not one that i'd want in solitude maybe seems a bit more high-end holiday homes than barracks to me so I decided to go for these little metal vanilla houses for this, create a small row of them, and then drop in again the block services into two of these so we have that benefit of having the barracks in our area without having the ugly assets. 
Now, of course, as well in our forestry area, we need to provide warehouses too, because I kind of see these as logistic centers where most of the truck traffic is going to run. I decided to put them slightly outside of the forestry on a tarmac proper road that can handle that kind of truck traffic. So here we're just creating a very simple bridge over from a road that was left over in the, in the nearby residential neighborhoods, just south of the highway. We'll just bring that up over the highway, which was tricky in itself <laughs> to get things right and also avoid the lamppost sticking through the road, which is a massive annoyance <laughs> in this game, let's face it. But I, it, it came in all right in the end. So I thought the ideal place really for our warehouses would be somewhere along this road. So direct access onto this main four lane, well, small, but four lane road here, but also directly into the forestry. So I chose this location and we just place in three mixed warehouses. So it doesn't look too uniform. It also doesn't look too massive and built up. But these are kind of older looking warehouses, particularly the warehouse yard, I think suits this area really well. And then I'll just assign it to paper, foam timber, and actually later come in and assign the third one to unique factory products, which we will come on to now. So of course, to support our forestry industry, we are going to put in Wood Vision, the furniture factory. Absolutely love this asset. And with pretty much every city I do, I feel like it needs to be located in a prominent position overlooking a highway. So this is just absolutely perfect for it. And orientation is absolutely key to this. So that big Wood Vision sign on the side of the building has to be facing towards the highway. It's like free advertising. That is absolutely how they would position the building if it were reality for this situation. So that is how I have done it. And that is a lesson learned from Overcharged Egg. He's been doing that with Wood Vision ever since Palavan days. Little shout out to Egg there. But yeah, it's absolutely the right placement for these. Now the tricky thing with this is it is a super, super steep hill down to the highway. So all of the roads coming into it actually are reasonably sensible gradients, but of course the furniture factory being relatively large needed to be on flat land here. So my big debate was how do we make this banking next to the highway actually look good? So the first thing that I did here was to introduce a retaining wall. And this is one off the workshop. It's actually one we used right back in the very first episode of Solitude in the small raised industrial area that we had in there. Actually, I think it was a water treatment plant even. Really, really nice assets, these. They look a little bit more worn and a little bit more run down than using a key, for example. And because they've actually got depth to them similar to a key, I think it adds a nicer dynamic and we can shape the landscape into it, which you'll see in a second. So it feels a little bit more natural using this asset, I think, rather than just a, a thin retaining wall in this case. So yeah, you can see us putting the terrain right over the top, but it still kind of looked a bit weird. So I had to introduce some terraforming networks at the bottom and at the top of it in order to make sure that the terrain was sitting really, really nicely there. So it's a little bit fiddly to get this one in accurately, but I think once it's in, it looks pretty cool and the detailing in a second really adds to it. Now, just on the unique factory front, we do not have very many in Solitude and you'll notice the budget isn't fantastic, honestly. I am playing modded, so I could easily cheat the budget, but I, I, I'm reluctant to at this stage. But we definitely need more income coming in so i think more unique factories will definitely come in the future i want to say we've got the household plastics factory in but i'm pretty sure that is literally the only one at the moment so yeah we we definitely we definitely want more in here and so this is really just the start of it so you can see i use some rock decals to cover up a lot of that green surface to make it feel a little bit more blasted <laughs> into the landscape which I think is a nice effect actually along the highway. It would realistically be like that and not just all overgrown and green. Obviously with time, I'd expect that jungle foliage to come back in. So you can see me patching up here with a bit of greenery, some few extra individual rocks for layering purposes. And yeah, love, love, love this finished effect. I actually think this view from the highway up towards the furniture factory is one of my favorites in solitude. And that's even including last time's tropical island which is something to be said. And of course, just final finishing touches are usual worn decals, absolute must to dirty up our factory area. There is no way the concrete would be pristine in this location. 
and we also added in a couple of extra car parking spaces outside our entrance. So a lot of these bankside details that you've just seen there we'll use throughout our forestry area now. So where we've got all the layers, I think covering up some of that green cliff texture that we have as part of our map theme with those rock decal assets will look really nice here. Introducing some shrubs and trees around the edges of the road. Also using our decals and our one by one ruined brush tool to effect to spread out some of that dust and mud and dirt away from the road so things don't look perfectly uniform as you drive around the complex. But I am going to shut up for a bit and I'll let you enjoy the detailing and we'll come back and review it in just a second.
Okay, so here we are. And I have to say, this view is becoming one of my favourites. I know there's a lot of trees, but that is the rainforest solitude way. So, <laughs> so there's a lot of greenery, but when you kind of look down on it, well, top down view, the view over the city is pretty awesome, particularly towards the downtown as well. And this is all kind of filled out with more infrastructure and housing and buildings and things like that. It's going to be pretty cool, I think. Yeah, there we go. It was a shorter than normal episode today, actually, because there's not really a lot to forestry. There's a lot of trees and they're already detailed for us. <laughs> I didn't really want to do anything too clever with the sapling fields. I think they're pretty nice assets just really as they are. So the detailing was really mainly actually perfecting these slope areas around the back of each of our layers really really like this i do like as well when you drive along these roads you can kind of see up well to the wind turbines which is pretty cool but also up to like the biomass pellet plant our makeshift pulp mill over here as well it's all it's all pretty cool and you can see the trees kind of disappearing on up the hill as well which is a really really nice effect but everything's working pretty efficiently we've already got up to level three and i've not had it playing that much got a lot of workers we still do have quite high industrial demand so we may need to come in and do a little bit more with that before we start expanding out housing too much let me just check the day night speed here bring it back to midday but it's all working pretty nicely and we don't actually have any kind of lack of goods warnings or anything like that so i think we've managed to get a relatively efficient setup in here yeah loving the use of the block surfaces as well so we don't have to have that horrendous well actually the maintenance building is quite nice but it's just too big for solitude and yeah the summer camp <laughs> barracks in particular little warehouse area again i've really not done too much to this i feel like sometimes maybe i go overboard with detailing but i think the props that come on these assets are enough around here and yeah it just lends itself pretty nicely as the default assets if we come down to the highway over here, so the sawdust storage actually isn't filling up right to the top just yet, but you can kind of see those cranes just above the trees peeking out and some of the infrastructure from the biomass pellet plant and things at the back as well, which I'm loving. <laughs> I'm loving this effect. Yeah, really, really like the layers in this build and across Solitude. I think we've made fairly decent use of the terrain in this case. And of course the like crowning jewel is absolutely this furniture factory on the hillside here. I love this. The combination of using the retaining wall with some rocks and foliage and this rock decal going up to the top of it really feels very, very solitude to me. And yeah, genuinely one of my favorite places in the city so far, actually, I, it sounds silly, but I get a lot of satisfaction from just simple highway views like this particularly with that mountain in the background as well very very satisfying indeed if we come from this way as well those wind turbines behind it i'm just loving it <laughs> i'm loving it and it sits in really prominently actually over this suburb down here so if we kind of follow it around here and go down onto street level you can see that furniture factory sitting so prominently at the end there you can see the forestry peeking out over the tops of the hills over there yeah, love it. Love, love, love the layers of solitude. Working with steep terrain can be very, very tricky, but I think it's quite rewarding, actually, in the end, when it comes down to it. So before we do stop for today, we're going to need a name for our forestry firstly, so please drop those into the comments below. Our island. So we've got two names here. We've gone for one name for the island and one name for the resort. So if we start off with the resort, BM Nels. 11 that's how i'm gonna say your name suggested few seasons and a lot of people agreed with you so we have gone for few seasons resort <laughs> love that for our big resort over here with tons of flooding warnings we'll ignore that for the moment and then for the main island actually overcharged egg suggested fewer fewer as in bora bora <laughs> so we've gone for fewer fewer island over here so it's the few seasons resort at fewer fewer <laughs> that's the name we've gone for thank you to everyone who suggested those I love love so many of your suggestions it's a shame that we can only take one in fact some of them i made bank for some of our other islands that we have got around the map and we do have a few there's a lot more down here one on the other side as well so we've got plenty more island naming still to come but for now yeah loving few seasons at fewer fewer 
So for today, that is going to be it. If you have enjoyed the video, just a gentle reminder that likes, comments, shares are all super greatly appreciated. I know a lot of interest has shifted from Cities 1, but I so, so, so appreciate all the love and support on this Solitude series as we continue it. We're a long way off completions. So we've got a long way to go. So thank you for sticking with it. But that is all from me for now. So thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for the cinematics and I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye.